Good morning. Welcome to the Church Communications Podcast. My name is Katie Ardard. I'm here with Josh Taylor. Good morning, Katie. Lovely as always. And today's episode is sponsored by usebulletin.com. How many tabs do you have open on your computer right now to do your church communications job? I'm betting that you have a lot. Yeah? Seven. <laughs> so many. And Bulletin uses uh, puts all those communications tasks in a single place instead of you having to go to multiple different places. You can create your print bulletins. Get this. You can create your print bulletins and create a digital bulletin that you can send to people, like text to them so that they can get it on their phones. You can also schedule and post all of your social media send text message alerts, and so much more with usebulletin.com. Um, it's going to completely change the way you communicate with your church for the better. And you can get started today for free by going to usebulletin.com. Again, that is usebulletin.com. So for just a second, I want to talk about how practical that is because one of the things that frustrated me the most was having so many different programs to do so many different things. That means you have so many different subscriptions mm -hmm. that are being transactioned out of your credit card. Mm -hmm. your, and so it makes finances easier to have mm -hmm. one place to do everything. It makes your uh, producing things easier to do that. Uh, and and I, I can see how practical something like that is because I'm so tired of having so many different programs. It's really neat. Uh, if you haven't like used it or went to use bulletin.com, sign up for the free account and just look at it because it's kind of like Canva. If you use Canva, it's, it's very similar to Canva, but it's built for bu building bulletins. Hmm. where Canva is not built for doing that. So it'll make your print bulletin, change that print bulletin into a digital bulletin that you can then text your whole congregation. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, win-win for everybody. If so, I was still in church ministry, I'd probably be checking them out. Yeah, I mean, why not? <clears throat> so today, we are talking about how shift happens. Shift happens. Sometimes things in your organization happen, like your senior pastor leaves and or maybe your communications minister leaves and you're the graphic designer and what do you do in those situations sometimes it's a holy shift <laughs> <laughs> i did it oh gosh we're gonna go viral tomorrow um yeah, yeah you've got to be shifting me <laughs> like right now it is it is so um, many puns so many things we're the we're terrible um okay so Let's talk about what you should do in this case. And we uh, actually, Brandon Rogers from our Facebook group, he's, he's terrific. He's at a church in Louisiana. He had writ this, written this great who blog. Um, yeah, who that? Um, he had written this great blog about transitional um, shift, about transitional um, change in your like leadership or in your organization and what you should do in the case that it happens to you. Yeah. And so he, he had five, I think five, no, he had more than that, seven great things that you should do. And we're just going to talk through them and you can go on the blog and read them as well and just keep them. So uh, the first thing he mentions is don't hit pause. To me, this is probably one of the most important ones because uh, oftentimes when leadership changes mm -hmm. or when there's a void in leadership, everybody just kind of stops what they're doing. In the machine right. They don't move and, forward. Yeah. They just think they're paralyzed by fear. Yeah. And that's not we're not a God, we're not serving a God who right. is paralyzed by fear or is stopping anything. Right, exactly. And, and so if God has laid a vision out in front of us for our church or our organization and has used a, a pastor or somebody to lay that vision out for us, that vision shouldn't die when, just because, just because of the departure change. of somebody because God hasn't left us. And, right. uh, and so we should continue moving forward with the vision that's in front of us mm -hmm. until a new vision has been cast. Right. Um, that, it, unless it was just an ungodly, unbiblical vision. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. And I said, Jesus is still on the throne. Yeah. And we're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, and it seems like in transitions, everything just falls apart and everybody worries and right, stresses they get about nervous everything. And but we I, serve a sovereign God and none of this catches him by surprise. And so we, uh, I, I love that first one is, is don't hit pause. In fact, you as communicators can be a really strong uh, voice in that transition because you keep the vision driving forward. You keep communicating um, not not a, as if nothing happened. I think we need to communicate mm -hmm. about the transition, but also communicate to folks, hey, Be we're, clear we're going as business as usual. And right. we're, we're still about the kingdom and right. we're still moving forward until the Lord gives us another vision. Right. And I think that leads into his second point, which is leaning in. So you may not know, know everything that's happening within the organization. You may not understand why leadership, uh, the shift is happening to you. But what you can do is uh, work towards progress mm -hmm. and uh, work towards goals that you previously set and just continue on mm -hmm. uh, as if nothing has changed. Yep. 
Um, it, which again goes into point number three of evaluate your role. Uh, in transition time, you know, we have transitions throughout our, our regular life. And this is why I love doing quarter based calendars rather than annual calendars, is because right. it gives us more transitions. It gives us four distinct transitions throughout the year mm-hmm. um, where we always have this sense of urgency towards the end of the year or this we're going to change things at the beginning of the year. It gives us that opportunity four times a year. Yeah. The same is with transition. It allows us to evaluate hey, are there things that we we can be doing better? Are we, our systems uh, working correctly? Is there a way that I can do my job better? Yeah. Is my job the right job that I should be in exactly. myself yeah. personally? And so, and you might find that that's changed mm-hmm. and this might be a good time for you to mention that to the leadership that does still exist mm-hmm. and say, Hey, let's figure out a way to change this while we're, while we're shifting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then he goes into, um, stretching yourself. And, uh, and I mean, this is important all the time, but transition is always a, a great way to do that, um, is uh, stretch yourself, stretch um, what you're capable of. This is an opportunity to uh, learn from other people. This is a lot, uh, an opportunity to listen to other people. Um, and again, it goes back to evaluation. It goes back mm-hmm. to introspection and, um, and, and evaluating even with the transition, whether it's the exit of a leadership for good reasons or bad reasons, um, what could have been done differently or what could mm-hmm. we have done better and how can I improve the role that I play in that? Yeah. Um, and I think that leads into seeking God. And we have talked about that throughout this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like um, no matter who is in charge or what's happening in the organization, like you should ask God to reveal to you um, what is best next for you personally mm-hmm. and also what's best next and to bring clarity to all the situations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reality is, is in any organization and a transition of leadership, you know, you don't always know what's happening. And Mm -hmm. some pastors come in and they bring in a new staff. Uh, Some pastors come in and they work with the staff that they have, um, which I love to see that happen. And it's the same in organizations, too. And so there's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of worry. There's going to be a lot of doubt. And again, it goes back to what Katie said. Jesus is still on the throne. This didn't catch him off guard. And maybe God is um, allowing you to stay where you are because the organization needs you, or maybe he's moving you on because that's better for you and better for the organization. Yeah. Um, and we, we can look back at our lives and see where God did that in our lives. And at the time we were worried, we were stressed, but when mm-hmm. we look back, we can look back and say, I'm so glad that happened. Right. I'm so glad I'm not in that place anymore. Not because it was a bad place, but I outgrew it or it wasn't the right place for me or whatever. And I could see where God is doing. And hindsight is always twenty twenty, mm-hmm. but we forget those moments so quickly when the next crisis comes up. And that happens a lot in churches where mm-hmm. pastors need to move on for whatever reason. I, I think the average tenure for a pastor now is like four to six years or something like wow. that. Wow, that's it's, crazy. It's, 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 turnover is pretty quick uh, for a pastor to stay I grew up 10 in years the normal longer, average tenure in my church, like, like growing years. up, was 25 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's, the world is changing now. Um, and, uh, you know, so a pastor that stays at a church for 10 years or longer is, that's a long tenure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, five to seven years, you know, or four to six years, whatever, whatever it is, is, is kind of a tenure. So you're probably going to experience this. Uh, if you're on mm-hmm. staff at a church, you're going to experience transition. And I, I think it's important for you to define now how you're going to handle Hand transition. Yeah. Um, and, and like, set are you going to be a chicken with your head cut off or are you going to be like <laughs> right. chill and it's going to be fine? And be the steady hand that people need because right. in transition, people need steady leadership. Right. They need somebody to look to to say everything's fine. Mm-hmm. So be that person who is the leader who's saying everything is fine. Right. Which goes to point number six of, six of don't assume the worst um, because life, tran- happens. life happens. That's exactly what he says there. Life yeah. happens. Transition happens. And honestly, when transition happens, especially in the world today with all the scandals and everything that unfortunately is having that the worst has happened. Exactly. And then even if the worst has happened, rumors and gossip and cynicism and all that don't serve the kingdom of God. Right. And uh, and we need to do what we can to serve the kingdom of God, not hide things, not skirt the issues, but only talk about facts because anything else that speculation doesn't serve anybody. Right. Um, so be positive and encourage people, let people know, Hey, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together. And if we sit down on the kingdom of God today, it's not going to collapse. Yeah. And it's okay for people to move on with their life. Exactly. All right. So the last one, and I think is my favorite one, find ways to lead up. So uh, he says your executive leadership needs your perspective. There are appropriate ways to communicate well, provide avenues to help support the work of your lead pastor or interim pastor and lead team. 
you're important and what you bring to the table is so imperative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so figuring out ways to lead up, it, it can be difficult, but also during this time, people are looking for leaders. Yeah. Yeah. And they're looking for steady people. They're looking, uh, you know, the worst thing that can happen in a transition is a void of leadership. And for those who should be leading to be silent because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do or they're hurt or they're broken. And I understand all the emotions that come through it. I mean, I've been through it. Most of us have probably been through it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't help for leadership to stay silent. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is, is when there's a gap in leadership or a void in leadership, somebody's going to take it right. and it may not always be the best person. Right. Um, and so we need to figure out a way to lead up. Uh, and the best way to do that is through humility, mm -hmm. not coming in as if you have all the answers, but listen, listen to people's concern show empathy, show compassion. Uh, don't feel, don't feel like you have to have all the answers, right? But work together to find the answers. Where do we go from here? And where is God leading us? Yeah. So that's a great article, Brandon. Thank you for, for writing that because I think leadership, especially in communications is maybe not something that we always think of, but honestly, you guys are often the first line of defense when it comes to the reputation of the yeah. church, the reputation of your staff and the pastors. Because and how you communicate and how to you, the yeah, community. Exactly. How do you communicate to the community? How do you communicate it to your congregation? How do you, mm -hmm. commu you know, yeah, communicate it to the world at large? You know, and you are the people who are doing that. And it's so important that we understand how we can best do it well. So, yeah. all right. Well, I think we've said everything that can be said. I think so. Great Which, article, Brandon. Uh, and the uh, shortest love to know your thoughts. we've ever done. That was, what is it, 12 minutes, minutes and 41 seconds, but, but hopefully it it's helpful for you. and hopefully helpful. Yeah. And Sue, you can read, there's, there's tons of books out there about organiz uh, organizational change. Mm -hmm. And uh, to leading up, there's a great book, I think by Chuck Scoggins. I don't know that one. Okay, yeah, about leading up. Anyway, so go check out those resources and... If you are listening to the podcast, subscribe. If you are not a member of our Facebook group or a, a fan of our Facebook page, go and like.